Hey everyone, here we are at the end of class. In this video, I'd like to take a few moments to sort of wrap up what we've been doing and synthesize the material. I hope that you've learned a bit about science fiction literature and identity and how it's represented. And based on the increasing quality every week of discussions, I think it's fair to say you have. Judging by your abstracts in last week's discussion, I can tell that some of you have been drawing connections between earlier texts and later texts, as well as between our later texts and theories that we might not have discussed those texts alongside of. That's great. When I built this course, I imagined that almost any text could go with almost any theory or philosophy. Sure, some go together better than others, or more obviously, like when it changed and Butler's idea of performativity, or Duandre's Dream of Electric Sheep and Baudrillard's Simulacra. However, I envision all of these texts and all of these theories in one sort of big freewheeling discussion in which all of them could be talking to each other at the same time in different ways. And I hope to see some of that in your final papers. We started this course with definitions, namely the definition of sci-fi. There are no easy or definitive definitions of the genre, and I hoped in part that that would prepare us for the discussions and uncertainties and difficulties of postmodern literary theory. Now, postmodern theory doesn't ostensibly have much to do with identity, not in the way that, say, gender performativity does. However, in their attempts to understand the postmodern condition of the world, theorists like Baudrillard, Jameson, and Leotard provide us with a base from which to think about the complexities of our postmodern world, a reality that defines the way we understand the world around us, and therefore the way we understand ourselves. Postmodern theory is also an important precursor to the shifts in theories of identity that allow Judith Butler to make her argument about gender performativity. Butler gives us a postmodern view of gender. First, she questions meta narratives, namely the meta narrative that there are some intrinsic or inherent qualities to biological males that make them act like men, or biological females that make them act like women. She argues, in fact, that these gender roles we long thought were connected to inherent and intrinsic traits are, in fact, superficial, literally surface level. There's nothing inherent about gendered acts, only the influence of social, political, and historical realities on each individual. This doesn't make these acts any less significant or any less real to our everyday lives. Their effect is felt at every level of society. However, society, especially Western modern society, has made the claim that these performative acts are somehow springing from some intrinsic, deep sense of self. Butler argues that in fact, gender is a simulacra. While we think there's some connection to a pure, inherent sex or gender, really, gender and identity only come about through the performance. And that performance doesn't even have an original. We are performing them into being. The shift to translation changes gears a bit, I admit. But translation reminds us of the slipperiness of language and of communication, which are concepts deeply tied to the way we understand ourselves. It's also a concept that dovetails nicely with science fiction as a genre. Sci-fi stories are almost always about an experience with the other, whether that other is a new and unknown place, like in Invisible Planets, or a new species or technology, like in Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep, or Solaris, sometimes the other is our own world and society, just slightly shifted, just a bit different, a little bit in the future, or with a slightly different past. But this change makes us approach what we thought we knew in a new light. Encountering the other is one of the most fundamental experiences in the way that we define ourselves. After all, who does it matter who I am if there's no you to compare it to? This is true when we're infants, when we're learning that we are unique and separate individuals from our caregivers and the world around us, but continues to happen every day as we learn and encounter new experiences, new people, and new ideas. We keep discovering ourselves every time we experience something that challenges us. Ultimately, I think that it's sci-fi's ability to reimagine this encounter with the other that has made it so enduring and popular. On the one hand, it shows us these beautifully imagined, crazy worlds that are totally different from anything we know. On the other hand, those worlds really act as a way to help us better understand ours. In short, we're sort of back to the definition of sci-fi, you know, cognitive estrangement. 
but at the risk of being gauche, I might say that sci-fi translates our world to us in a way that we can better understand and see it. You know, the spaceships. Well, there's much more I could say, but this video is already going a bit long. So I'll end by asking you to take a few moments to fill out your course evaluations. This online learning experience is new for a lot of us, and we're all still trying to figure it out. It's my hope that we can make online courses as valuable and interesting and engaging as in-person classes, and your feedback is really helpful for that. So, have a great break, live long and prosper.